Usually, marine biology conjures up images of dolphins and clear blue seas. But like many careers, the reality can be slightly less glamorous. I love the smell of mud in the morning on a field trip. Um, I love these mangoes, I love the salt marsh. Yeah, geez, they're um, like a, 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 my backyard, I think now. Dr. Peter McCready's team of researchers is investigating so-called blue carbon reserves. Blue carbon is carbon that is captured and stored by the oceans. Uh, the oceans are blue, therefore the name blue carbon. On land we have green carbon, which is carbon bound by trees and forests. But in the oceans, the heavy lifting is really being done by three ecosystems. You've got your seagrass meadows, your salt marshes, tidal marshes, and mangroves. Uh, these ecosystems occupy less than 1% of the sea floor, yet they sequester half the ocean's carbon. And blue carbon is green gold. Well, here it is. Places like this mangrove reserve outside of Melbourne can capture carbon 40 times faster than tropical rainforests. And how effective they are at that can be measured by a simple tea bag. If the tea had gone, it's being broken down by microbes and they're the gatekeepers of the carbon cycle. So they're the ones that'll be breaking, munching it up and releasing it as greenhouse gases back into the atmosphere. But um, if you've got a lot of the tea there, it, as carbon still there, it's preserving it really well. And effectively these ecosystems are a bit like tombs, watery tombs, watery graveyards for the carbon. Peter McCready's team has set up a protocol for this citizen science tea bag project to get a global picture of blue carbon reserves. It's now operating in 35 countries. They're so important, these blue carbon ecosystems. Uh, they might be small in area, but they're really packing a big punch when it comes to climate change. In fact, um, we are losing these ecosystems at 1% to 3% per year in Australia, and that's equivalent to an extra 10 million cars on the road in terms of um, emitted carbon when we degrade them. So they're really important. All right, guys, you ready to get your first blue carbon core? Yeah. 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 All right. Well. Dr McCready's team doesn't need high-tech scientific equipment for today's field work. <laughs> Who wants to do the honours? Me. Uh, <laughs> Bill Toy. Alrighty. Just I, I trust you. <laughs> I, <can't>. I don't. <laughs> he regularly takes groups of business people on his field trips in the hope of helping blue carbon environments with their PR problem. Oh, yes. well, they don't have the charisma of the Great Barrier Reef. They're often considered at the armpits of the coast. Um, I think people are just unsure about them. Um, I think they're gorgeous. Um, I love being in the mud in these places. That is a hurricane and falcon. At home and out of the mud, Dr McCready's other passion is his family. Who's this guy? Look at him. Nothing's more important, I think, than leaving the oceans and the planet in as good, if not better, shape than we left it. For as long as I've known Pete, he's always loved the, the ocean and swimming, fishing, snorkeling. Um, I think he's got a, just naturally got that scientific mind of wanting to fix things and think of ways to make the ocean a better place. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I guess he's just always had a love for it. His wife Stacy believes a brush with cancer in his early 20s gave Peter a renewed perspective and passion for making a difference for future generations. He's very passionate about his work in the environment. Um, you know, every holiday that we have, we'll, we'll go to the beach and he's using his scientific terminal to say, hey kids, look at this fantastic specimen of seagrass. But yeah, he really is very passionate about it. And I think he's very good at it as well, he, because of that love for it. He's very good at being, uh, uh, at communicating widely, you know. I mean, he does drive you nuts because he is so uh, enthusiastic, but I think that's also just a part of the package. Professor Catherine Lovelock has collaborated with Dr McCready in the past and says his enthusiasm for his work serves an important purpose. He has a really uh, great capacity to engage with industry. He's been really influential at talking to some of the big corporates in, uh, in Australia and beyond. So his capacity to communicate and really convince people that this is a really interesting and important endeavour has been uh, very influential. That's uh, breaking the waters. That's the first stage of the blue carbon obstetrics. Dr McCready's now on his next mission, to sell the idea of blue carbon credits 
At the moment, big polluters can only offset their emissions on land with activities like tree planting. He wants them to also be able to restore wetlands like this. Uh, that is a great blue carbon core, so congratulations. But first, he needs to convince the public to share his passion for mud and mangroves. It's all about people power here. If we believe the oceans are important and we want to protect and preserve and conserve, um, conserve them, um, then our politicians will respond to that and we'll see more change happening. Thank you.